This is part three of the five part series about queen rearing. This part is about using a cloak board. The term cloak board comes from the fact that a cloak board was invented by a New Zealander, a New Zealand beekeeper. In fact, he was a South Island New Zealand beekeeper, so close, relatively close to where I do my beekeeping. His name was uh, Harry Cloak, and uh, I understand it, or I understand from uh, Trev, from Trev's Bees, who also produces videos, that he did his, uh, created this in the mid 1900s, so in the 50s or 60s. Now, don't quote me on that because I could be completely wrong. The cloakboard method is used worldwide, and it's not the only method for rearing queen cells. I use it because I find it's convenient and it might work for you. Okay, I'm going to try and explain a cloak board. This is just a standard queen excluder that I've put into a special rim which has a slot in it which allows me to take this piece of metal. You can make this out of anything, wood, whatever you like, and slides into there like that and closes up completely. If that's slid in place and placed on top of the bottom box, below the, bottom bo uh, below the top box of the uh, double deep, then you'll see it's got a, a rim around it and a space across the front. And that space then becomes an entrance. When it's time to take the cloak board out, you don't need to break the hive down. I do break the hive down and pull this queen excluder off and brush all the bees off it before I put the, the, the actual cloak board in place because otherwise you'll squash lots of bees. But when it comes time to actually pull the cloak board out, you just go to the front of the hive and just literally pull it out. And what? It comes out quite comfortably. There'll be bees all over it, but it doesn't kill any bees as it comes out. And I generally sit this, prop this up at the front of the hive and let those bees that are on it walk back into the hive. And now, once it's out, this just becomes a regular uh, queen excluder again, with one exception. And that one exception is that uh, we have this little piece of metal that fits in the front and blocks off that entrance and now at that point it's just a regular queen excluder. If we think back to the last part on this series where I put up a picture with days 1 to 16 representing the days and the progress of a uh, queen cell from egg through to emerge I'm now going to put up something similar, but I'm just focusing on days 0 through to 6. So 0 being the day before an egg is born. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps to using the cloak board. The first step is to put a queen excluder in on day 0. And to, of course to make sure that the queen is in the bottom box of your double deep brood chamber. What I also do at that stage is I lift most of the brood from the bottom box up into the top box. I leave it one, one and a half frames of brood in the bottom box to keep enough uh, nurse bees in the bottom to look after the queen who is also down there. What this does is it drags most of the queen bees, sorry, start, say that again, what this does is it drags most of the nurse bees into the top box to look after the brood, plus any cells that emerge during the process of making queen cells end up in that top box. And that's quite important. So, day naught, queen excluder in. Day three, we put the cloak board in. So we don't just put the cloak board in, so, we, so basically we seal off 
the top box from the bottom box. We also, as we put the cloak board in, we shut the front entrance of the bottom box and we open the back entrance of the bottom box. And what that does is that it allows bees from the bottom box, field bees, to still fly, but to fly they have to go out the back entrance. They take off, they go foraging, when they come back they land on the front entrance where they normally get into the hive and they find that the door shut. Then they climb up the front of the hive and they find an entrance above that which takes them into the top box. So what that does is that it, over the coming few days is it crams that top box full of bees and depletes the size, the number of bees in the bottom box. On day four, we do the graft and we put the graft into the top box. On day five, we take the cloak board out and we reverse the entrances back to their original situation. We close the back entrance of the bottom box and we open the front entrance. So on day five, we've returned that hive, that entire hive, both boxes, to a queen right status. But of course the queen is still unable to access those cells that are being built up top. We've, what we've done at that stage is I've already covered off in the how to make bees make queens, part one, is that we've first taken advantage of the emergency cell instinct within the bees to get them to draw out cells, then by making the hive queen right again we're now reverting to the swarm cell instinct for them to build those cells out. On day six, we can go into the hive, pull the graft up and out and have a look at it and brush the bees off gently with a brush. Don't shake it because it's all very fragile and we can count to see how well we did, how many cells took. If you can get, uh, if you can get 18 out of 24, you're doing okay. If you can get 20 out of 24, that's pretty good. If you can get 22 out of 24, that's really good. If you can get 24 out of 24, that's exceptional. I budgeted on getting between 18 and 20. Most times I exceed that. This is what a hive looks like on day four. Let's have a look at a hive that has the cloak board in it and uh, but at the moment it's just acting as a regular queen excluder. This is actually where I put the graft that was in the uh, part two. So here's the front of the hive. I've got the, this little entrance here that I can just close down and close that off. I'm not going to put it right down right now because you have to get the bees out of the way otherwise you'll squash them and that just sits up out of the way up a little bit higher you can see that strip of tin and that's not the full cloak board in there that's just the uh, block so that that's no longer an entrance. If I go around to the back of the hive you'll see that I've just got this little plug here and if I want to open an entrance at the back I just pull that plug out and the bees find it very quickly and start coming and going there. Well, actually no, let me say that again, they start going there, they don't come back into that hole, they return to where they've oriented to, which is the front of the hive, and then they walk up the front and go in, which means you get a migration of bees from the bottom box up to the top box, which helps to overcrowd that top box and create the right conditions for your graft. As you can see, this whole process is quite complicated. It's reasonably straightforward if you're grafting one hive at a time, or more to the point, doing one graft at a time in one hive. When the season gets going, later on in October and into November, December, I'm going to be doing multiple grafts running at the same time I'll have uh, two, three, sometimes even four graphs in pro progress all at once. When that happens, it really does start to get 
quite uh, complicated. So what I've done for myself, certainly not something that uh, many people would need to organise, I've enlisted the help of my computer and Excel. I've created uh, a spreadsheet that looks like that and that spreadsheet uh, automatically updates the date when it's saved or uploaded and it populates the cells. What I'm showing you here is just a, an example with some pretend data in it. You'll see the different colors. Red means I've got to do it today. Yellow is, an, is a day when I, there's something in the process that I have to do in the future. And then if you look, I'll just put another date in there and you'll see that the cells automatically change color as the dates progress. So that's all pretty fancy. Like any computer system that you use to try and make life simpler, it's only as good as the data that you put in. And as you'll see in the next video, uh, I think I made a bit of a botch up on the last graph that I did. In fact, I know I did it, made a little bit of a botch up. Uh, they say with computers, garbage in, garbage out. And if you rely on them, sometimes you can go astray. Nevertheless, it is a useful tool and it's uh, up to the operator, me, to put the right data into it. All right, well, I think that's time to wind this video up. This is the end of part three. Part four, which is coming soon, is how I use an incubator to manage my queen cells as I uh, run through the process. I'm hoping that you're enjoying these, this series of videos. It's taken a huge amount of, time, of my time to produce them. And uh, I think when I get to the end of part five, I'm going to take a break for a week or so from posting videos uh, to get some real work done. Anyway, thanks for watching.